Hello everyone, welcome to HSJ Engineering. Today, I would like to discuss with you about plates in injection mold, which comes under mold technology, split cavities, a molding which has a recess or projection which prevents the normal inline ejection of the command is termed as an undercut molding. An undercut molding requires the removal of that part of the impression which forms the undercut prior to ejection. External undercut commands, any recess or projection on the outside surface of the command which prevents its removal from the cavity is termed as an external undercut. There are two types of undercut, one local undercut, two continuous undercut. The recess or projection occurs in one place only is known as local undercut. The recess or projection around the outer surface of the component which is continuous is known as continuous undercut. The recess or projection around the outer surface of the component which is continuous is known as continuous undercut. In either case, it is necessary to split the cavity inserts into two parts and open these at right angles to the line of draw to relieve the undercut before the molding are removed. Since the cavity is in two pieces, a parting line will be seen on the finished product. The parting line can be positioned any center line for a symmetrical command. For unsymmetrical command, there is only one possible position. For example, the parting line for pen cap can only occur on the center of the position. An incorrect parting line will restrict the free opening movement of the split, which will result in scored, cracked command. The join line should be as invisible as possible in the molding. Splits Cavities made of different moving blocks are known as splits. They are used to mold a common with an external undercut. The cavity form is machined into different the cavity blocks. The cavity blocks are moved away as the mold is being opened so that the undercut is free from cavity surface. When the mold is opened, the command is on the core which allows normal ejection. There are two basic designs where the splits are retained on the mold plate and actuated automatically. Sliding splits and angled. Sliding splits and angled lift splits. In both, there are moving parts and it is necessary to 1. Guide the splits in desired direction. Actuate the splits and 3. Securely lock the splits in position before the material is injected into the mold. Actuation of splits. The splits are mounted in guides, flat mold plate and are actuated by mechanical, hydraulic or pneumatic means. The splits are positively locked in their closed position by heels. Sliding splits can be mounted on the, either the moving or the fixed mold plate. Cavities made of different moving blocks are known as splits. They are used to mold a common with an external undercut. There are three main factors. Slide movement must ensure that the split halves always come together in the same place. All the parts of the guiding system must be of adequate strength to support the weight of the splits and to withstand the force applied to the split by the operating mechanism. The two halves must have a smooth unrestricted movement. The guiding function is normally accomplished by providing a T-shaped slot on the mold plate or using two shouldered gibs. The starting position retention is by means of spring, ball catch or other standard item. Mold plate design for sliding split. Slide movement is accomplished by the following design. T slot design. The figure A shows the solid design. The single part construction is ideal for small molds where the mold plate is hardened. The figure B shows the mold plate with slot milled in it. Two flat steel strips are clamped on either side to get the required T shape. Mold plates can be either hard or soft. If soft, wear plate is required below the slide. Gibbs design. In this design, a flat mold plate is selected. A shoulder is provided on the slider. The shoulder slides on an L-shaped rail fixed on the flat plate. In this case, the mold plate can be soft. The addition to rails, a wear plate is placed below the slide. Guide pin design. In this case, a blind pocket is milled on the plate. The slide is guided on two hardened and ground pins within pocket. The slide can be without shoulder. The plate need not be hard, but a hardened wear plate should be given below the slide. Sliding unit. Standard sliding units are available from manufacturer like DME, as etc. These integrated units incorporate sliding as well as retention mechanism which can be easily attached to the mold plate. Methods of operation. The splits are actuated by various types of cam like finger cam, dogleg cam and cam track method. As the mold is opened, the cams attached to the fixed half moves the split to slide across the moving plate and when the mold closes, the splits are progressively closed. Another, another method of actuating the split is by the use of compression spring. But as these can be used only to open the split, the locking heels are used to close the split. The splits can also be actuated hydraulically. 
finger cam actuation finger cam are hardened pillars mounted at an angle in the fixed mold plate the splits have corresponding angle circular holes to accommodate these finger cams as the mold opens a finger cam forces the splits to move outwards split movement so as the contact with the finger cam is lost further movement of moving arm causes the ejector system to operate on closing the finger cam re-enter the holes in the split and forces the split to move inward the final closing is done by the locking heels the traverse by each split across the face of the mold plate is determined by length and and angle of the finger cam movement of a solid finger cam is given below The movement of the slide m is equal to l into sin theta minus c by cos theta. Working length l can be calculated as follows. Rearranging equation 1, we get m cos theta is equal to l sin theta into cos theta minus c. l is equal to m cos theta plus c divided by sin theta cos theta, which is equal to m by sin theta plus c by sin theta cos theta, which is equal to m by sin theta plus 2c by 2 sin theta 2 cos theta, which is equal to m by sin theta plus 2c by sin 2 theta. Therefore, l is equal to m by sin theta plus 2c by sin 2 theta. Alternatively, l can also be calculated as follows on the above formula where m is equal to split movement theta is equal to angle of finger cam l is equal to working length of finger cam c is equal to clearance the split movement must be kept to a minimum the clearance c has two purposes one ensure that the force which is applied to the split during the injection is not transferred to the relatively weak cam it permits the mold to open a small amount before the split are actuated in certain cases this movement can be used to withdraw the core from the molding the amount of delay movement d can be calculated by the following equation d is equal to c by sin theta an angle of 10 degree to 25 degree is given for finger cam larger angle is given for longer slide movement with a shorter cam pin the diameter increases with the length of pin the lead angle at the front is normally theta plus y degree one or two finger cam are used to operate each split depending on the split size split design an angular hole at 28 degree from vertical is made on the slide a slide clearance of 0.5 mm front clearance of 0.3 mm and a back clearance of 0.8 mm are normally given by boring or milling for practical purpose the hole can be drilled one mm bigger than the cam diameter after shifting the center 0.25 mm towards the back layer. This will give a clearance value approximately 0.3 mm front side and 0.8 mm at back side. Finger cam actuated mold sleeve ejection. The first picture shows a closed condition and the second picture shows an open condition of a mold and then the ejection. Wedge angle. Wedge angle is kept 2 to 3 degree more than the cam angle. The difference in angle is required for two reasons. Maintain a gap between the moving slide and locking heel surface as the mold opens to avoid cross locking. It ensures the final closing is done by the strong heel, not the weaker cam pin. Initially, when the mold opens due to clearance between cam and slide, there is no slide movement till the mold is opened by the amount D, known as delay. This will produce gap equal to D sin alpha between wedge block and slide mating surface. Further mold motion opening of H will create an additional gap of h tan alpha but this time the slide also moves by an amount equal to h tan theta therefore the effective gap is given by the formula g is equal to d sin alpha plus h into tan alpha minus tan theta dog leg cam actuation dog leg is used where a greater split delay is required when there is a stationary core pin in the fixed half of the mold the common may stick on the cavity side this can be avoided by having the part encased with the split till the part is stripped off from the stationary core pin in order to delay the split movement a straight portion is given on the cam the split do not immediately begin to open when the mold halves are open because the straight portion of the dog leg cam during this time the part comes out of the stationary core pin further movement of the moving mold causes the movement of the split by the angular portion of the dog leg cam thus the part is released from the undercut the reverse action occurs when the mold is closed the dog leg cam has a rectangle to cross section the angle may vary from 10 to 25 degree the lead in can be a tapered or radiuses now calculation for dog leg cam the following formula help us to calculate the dog leg cam movements Split design for dog leg cam. The hole in the slide can be angular throughout. One side angle and other side straight or combination of taper and straight on either side as shown below. Cam track actuation. Cam track is also used for delayed slide movement. A cam track is machined in the steel plate. It is fixed on the fixed half of the mold. A freely rotation process is fixed on either side of the slide. As the mold opens and closes, the both slides on the cam track. 
which result in corresponding slides movement. A wedge block is needed for final closing. The various dimensions needed for cam track actuations can be calculated from the following formulas. Split design. In this design, no shoulder can be given on the slide as it will obstruct the cam movement. A freely rotating sleeve is fixed on either side with a distance screw in order to avoid friction and to reduce wear and tear. Split locking method. It is essential to hold the split rigidly during the actual injection phase as the high pressure developed within the impression will tend to force them apart. Sliding splits can be conveniently locked in position by the use of a chase bolster. Each split will have a sloping or angle face accurately matching the angle face of chase bolster. Two basic design of chase bolsters are open channel type and enclosed channel type. Open channel chase bolster. Simplest of the design is by machining a channel with angle slides across the width of the plate. The projection formed are called locking wheels. Wear plates are used to resist wear. Open channel chase bolsters can be made an assembly by attaching individual heel block to a plate. Enclosed chase bolsters. An enclosed chase bolster is preferred for deep plates as it results in more rigid structure. Chase bolster is made by machining a pocket with a tapered circular or rectangular form. The taper is kept 2 to 3 degree more than the finger cam angle. Depth of locking heel in chest bolster. The hole in the slide can be angular throughout. One side angle and other side straight or combined or taper and straight on either side are shown below. Split safety arrangement. It is necessary to provide certain safety features in mold with cam method actuation. When the mold is fully open, the split are not in contact with the cams. Therefore, the split may be moved out of alignment by shock, vibration or even gravity. To arrest this movement by gravity, the split should be operated horizontally with respect to the machine. To prevent the movement of the split by shock or vibration, the following methods can be used. Ball catch method. A spring-loaded plunger is fitted below the surface of the split. When the split is open, the plunger is engaged in a small conical depression, which retains the split normally in that position. The distance between the plunger and the depression is equal to the movement of the split. Spring loaded pin method. The splits are spring loaded so that after they are actuated, they remain in the open position. A pin fitted to the underside of the split is free to move in a recess in the mold plate. A spring is fitted between the pin and the end of the slot. Spring with pin or plate stop. In this case, the splits are spring loaded so that after they are actuated, they remain in the op open position with the help of a stop pin or plate. As we use bigger diameter spring, slightly heavier slides can be used. Since the spring in line with the split movement, the compression load has to be taken by the cam. Position sensors. Sometimes position sensors are used or placed to ensure that the slide has been returned to initial position. Sensor also may be placed below the ejector system to ensure its position especially when hydraulic knockout systems are employed. Early return mechanism. When there are ejector pins or sleeve directly below the slider path, the ejector system has to be taken fully back before the slide is brought into avoid collision. The ejector system can be positively returned early using the mechanism shown below. When the mold closes, the knockout bar fixed on the fixed half hits the retainer bar which moves the ejector system back. The knockout bar moves past the retainer bar into the clearance provided on the ejector plate and base plate when the ejector system has been fully returned to its initial position. The slide crosses the any pin or sleeve below it only they have been moved out of collision.